In this video tutorial, we are going to build the contact tracing manager that you can see on your screen. This is a Java application written with MindFusion's diagramming and scheduling components for Java. When you double click on the add person icon, a dialog appears that lets you enter data for the person. When you click OK, a new node is created. When you connect the nodes, you create a contact between them. Contacts can be created by clicking on the respective icon in the toolbar as well. The grid beneath the diagram lists all people and their contacts. The contacts are rendered in a combo box and you can change them. You can apply two layout algorithms to make your contact flowchart easier to read, fractal and spring layout. The application supports save and load of data. The save function saves the current diagram in a file. When you press load, you can see all saved files in a panel and select the one to load. We start by creating a new Java project called Contact Tracing Manager. We browse to its location on the disk and create a subfolder called lib. There we copy the jpack jar file and the two other Java FX packages that we will need for the project. The jpack jar is included in the download of the trial version of MindFusion Pack for Java Swing. We include all three jar files from the lib directory to the build path of our application. We create our first class, called Person, in the project. We import the namespaces that we will reference in this class. The Person class uses a few variables. We have strings for the phone, document ID, image, and the contact date. There is a list with JSON objects and a collection with person instances which represent the people that were in contact with this person. The JSON object class is a helper class exposed by the Java Diagram Library for storing key and value pairs in Java in a manner JSON strings are built. We add three different constructors to the person class. Each one creates a person instance according to the data available. Here is the validate image method that makes sure the user has loaded a correct file to be used as an image for this person. The method convert to buffered image turns the loaded image into a buffered image. We add now getter and setter methods for all class variables that we've initialized. Name, phone, document ID, contact list, image, etc. The last two methods that we will add to the person class are from JSON and to JSON. They will convert between strings and JSON objects the data for this person. 
We want to create a dialog that lets the user create person instances. Before we do that, we will create a base class for all dialogs that will be used in the application. We add a new class and name it Base Dialog. It is an abstract class that implements two interfaces, Action Listener and Window Listener. The base dialog class uses a static variable of type dialog result, a J table, a J tree, and a diagram. The diagram is an instance of MindFusion Diagramming Library for Java Swing. Now we create the constructor and in it we specify that this dialog will be modal and a few other properties like size, type, and more. We create a JPanel to hold the dialog content and we add to it two buttons, OK and Cancel. We add a helper method that makes some calculations based on the screen size and the size of the dialog and places the dialog in the center of the screen. We call the PutWindowInCenter method to make sure our dialog is rendered in the middle. With that, our base dialog class is ready and we can go on implementing the person dialog class that extends it. We create the person dialog class, which extends base dialog. We initialize the controls and variables that we will need. We will use two text fields for the name and document ID, a combo box, a formatted text field, a buffered image, and a person instance. This is the person that will be created if the user selects the OK button. In the constructor of the person dialog, we initialize several JLabel instances for the text fields for the person data. We add them to the content pane of the form. As you remember, the base dialog had a diagram instance and in person dialog we add a getter and a setter for this diagram. We add the event handler for the action performed event. We check there which button was pressed. If it is the cancel button, we hide the dialog. If it was the photo button, we show a file chooser to allow the user to select the desired image file for the person. If the OK button was pressed, we need to verify the data and then create the person instance. We add one more method to the base dialog class, which is called show dialog. It renders a message dialog with a title and text provided as parameters. In the data is valid method, we check the input that was provided in the text fields. If something is wrong, we display a warning with the error. If the data is OK, we close the dialog and create a person instance. We need to add two more setters now. One is for JTable and one is for JTree. We need them because we want the person dialog class to have a reference to the table with the contacts, which is rendered in the main window, and the tree that is rendered to the left. We must add an event handler for the window closed event that is available through the window listener interface. Before we are able to do that, we need to implement a custom diagram node class, contact node. We will do this in part two of our tutorial. You can download the full source code with all libraries used of this application from the link in the video description section. Thank you for watching and see you in part 2.